Hello, everyone. Welcome to another month, another Community Connections event. Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Jeremy Capone. I am your Community Connections Program Coordinator, and uh, we are super excited for today's guest. Uh, I'm uh, uh, happy to uh, announce that uh, Karim Chalifour uh, from Young Adult Cancer Canada, she's the Program Director at Young Adult Cancer Canada is going to be delivering a presentation today on young adults uh, with cancer and some of the programs and services from Young Adult Cancer Canada uh, and uh, some of the incredible uh, things that they offer and ways that they can help. So we are super, super excited uh, to have her present. Uh, I will also mention that if you are watching live and you do have any questions, we also have uh, Danny here from Young Adult Cancer Canada in the chat box ready to uh, answer any of your questions. So you can uh, go ahead and uh, ask those in the chat. Uh, and I'm sure she's more than happy to address your questions. Um, and then just another mention that we will be starting our cooking demonstration um, at 12 p.m. So right after this presentation, there's going to be a short break. Um, and then uh, we're going to jump into the kitchen for uh, cooking healthy, nutritious cooking demonstration. We're going to be focusing on actually budget friendly cooking today. Uh, which I think is uh, very appropriate. Um, so hopefully you stick around for that. Uh, but without further ado, uh, Karine uh, from Young Adult Cancer Canada. Hello everyone. Uh, my name is Karine Shelley Four. I'm the program director uh, for Young Adult Cancer Canada, YAC for short. I hope you're well, and I'm quite grateful for the opportunity to share with you a little bit of information about. YAC as an organization, so how do we support our young adult community, but also share with you some of the key findings uh, from the YAC Prime study uh, so that you understand some of why YAC delivers the program we deliver. So I will share my screen and uh, start with the little presentation. Let's do it. Young adults with cancer. So um, we often refer to them as Generation F um, for the forgotten generation. Uh, for the longest time, um, the young adults have not been the focus of our healthcare system. They have not been the focus of um, of the, yeah, of the support services research in so many ways. So they have been the forgotten generation young adults. So what are we talking about? Uh, the Adolescent and Young Adult National Network in Canada and the National Cancer Institute in the U.S. will define adolescents and young adults as 15 to 39 years of age. And that's about the age group uh, we're referring to. And that age group, there, there are over 8,000 adolescent and young adults diagnosed with cancer in Canada every year. Uh, so that's about eight times as much um, as the children. So they are not an insignificant uh, number of people. And so we need to pay attention to them. And so as we look at that, this means that there are way over 200,000 young adult survivors uh, living with or beyond their cancer diagnosis in Canada. So once again, we're talking about a population that is young and that is a very big representation of um, our country. So let's pay attention. YAC research. So before I jump into um, more details on YAC's programs and services, I'm actually starting with a very brief overview of some of the key findings that we, um, we have with the YAC Prime study that we've done a few years ago that we're still gathering uh, data and information from. Uh, so for years, YAC was receiving four to five research recruitment requests every month. Um, to help with recruitment. So researchers in the country were hoping, doing a research with young adults, asking us to help them find young adults. And so we have done that for a long time. But for years, our dream was to find a research partner that we could really dig into some of the major research questions and initiatives we had. And we found that partner in 2015, September 2015, uh, Jeff Eaton, who's our executive director at YAC, uh, myself and Dr. Sheila Garland, 
who is um, a professor at Mann University, Memorial University in Newfoundland and Labrador. Uh, we've became uh, this family and have developed the YAC Prime study. So I'll share with you a few findings from the study that is really gonna be an overview and give you an idea of the impact cancer has on the young adult cancer population. And that in many, many ways explains uh, the services, why we offer what we offer at YAC is to help with those impact. So I'll start with the impact, but following, don't, don't leave following. I'm gonna give you some ways to uh, get some support if you're going through that. So the YAC Prime study, yes, was myself, Jeff, and Sheila, but we had a number of incredible partners across the country uh, who have helped make this research possible. So the Prime study, what was it? So it was 622 young adults. So at that time, it made it the biggest study of its kind um, to do this. Uh, and we looked at a variety of, uh, of things such as sleep, body image, distress, fear of recurrence, coping strategies, social support, post-traumatic growth. All of that was collected through our survey. Uh, we were looking for anyone diagnosed with cancer between 15 and 39, currently 19 years and older. And uh, there was no other restrictions really put on anything, wherever people were from, uh, whatever lived experience they were going through, uh, they could participate. And it was both in French and in English. So this is kind of what we found based on that. So you have a, a kind of a map of Canada that kind of shows the distribution of participants. Uh, when you look at the percentages, it actually is pretty close to the proportion per province. Uh, so we were kind of happy with that, even though we didn't uh, reach all uh, variety of population. We're working on that, but this was our map of Yak Prime. So now let's dig into what are the emotional costs of cancer on the young adult population? What are they? So if you are yourself listening and going through cancer as a young adult, I'm sure you have a pretty good idea. Uh, if you're a health professional, uh, you might learn some things. You might just be confirmed in some things or affirmed in some things. And if you don't know much about young adults, hopefully that's going to help you understand uh, what this means to have cancer in your 20s and 30s. First, let's look at um, psychological distress. Uh, so we looked at that in the Act Prime study. Uh, we wanted to, to see in psychological distress, if you're wondering. So it's used to describe the collective experience of depression and anxiety symptoms. Uh, and so that's kind of what psychological distress is. And so through Yak Prime study, we have found, so this is kind of, I'm not going to get into those details, uh, but those um, were uh, some of the ways we've measured and found our information. We compared our young adult cancer survivors and patients with a matched sample of young adults who do not have cancer. And that's how we were able to kind of compare what is the impact? You have cancer, you don't have cancer. Is anxiety a young adult thing? or is it worse when you have cancer? So let's see what we found. Psychological distress. So we have found that 46.7% of the, the people respondent at the, the study were uh, going through moderate to severe distress levels. Um, this is something that we need to pay attention to when we meet with young adults and when we treat young adults with cancer. So 46, it's almost half of them who were living with moderate to severe distress. And if you compare with uh, matched peers, so peers, same age, same comparison uh, without cancer, you can see that there's a line here uh, where you can see the cutoff for mild distress and uh, almost 25 um, that's the, the kind of, and that's, that's the rate of our um, survivor community. So there is a significant difference uh, between those without cancer and those with cancer. So it appears the levels of distress are much higher if you're going through cancer as a young adult. Severity of distress, it was largely independent uh, of demographic and cancer variables. Um, the only things that remain significant uh, were employment status and years of education. Uh, but uh, body image dissatisfaction, fear of cancer recurrence, poor social support, all of that was associated with high levels of distress. 
Uh, so that made us really curious to look into each of those categories. So fear of cancer recurrence. Fear of cancer recurrence, FCR, is defined as fear, worry, or concern relating the possibility that cancer will come back or progress. Uh, if you know someone, if you have cancer or know someone who has cancer, you have probably had conversations where a fear of the recurring cancer uh, has been at play. Uh, this is something actually quite common. Um, again, we had a bunch of different demographic uh, variables to look into that. And what we found was 59.2% of the participants in the study had a clin clinically significant level uh, of distress. Um, so this means they were going through every day thinking about the possibility of cancer coming back uh, from a few minutes to a few hours for some. That can be quite paralyzing and that takes up a lot of space and a lot of energy. And you know what? It's not visible. So you might be interacting with someone who has cancer, who has had a really tough morning, who's been kind of stuck with their recurring thought of, I'm afraid, I'm not feeling well, is it my cancer coming back? And if you never had cancer, you might think, oh, come on, don't worry about that. You should stop thinking about it. It is not that easy. And as we can see, almost 60% of the participants are really struggling with this. And that's something, once again, that we need to pay attention to. Uh, the factors that we found that were associated with uh, high fear of cancer recurrence of time since diagnosis. So the closer people were to their diagnosis, the higher the recurrence. Having had a previous recurrence as well, distress, moderate to severe distress influence the fear of cancer recurrence and body image dissatisfaction. What we've noted is cancer stage, so meaning, you know, stage one, two, three, four, that was not related to how, how high or low the fear of cancer recurrence was. Sex, age and diagnosis, current age, education, number of children, sleep, all of those things had nothing to do with it. It's really just the top factors that influence that. Sleep now. So we also look, Dr. Sheila Garland is quite an expert around sleep and insomnia and cancer. And we looked at sleep because sleep is often underlooked uh, in uh, many of our community members, but really poor sleepers. So we can see that 86% of the participants uh, would qualify as poor sleepers. Again, that's really important because as we know, sleep is hugely impactful on our lives, our quality of life and how we function. So to, to find that out was quite striking. Uh, survivors with greater years of education reported better sleep quality than those with less. Survivors who are in school, better sleep quality um, than those neither in school or working. Survivors two to five years after their treatment had better sleep quality than those who were one year or less. Uh, distress, so clinically distressed survivors reported worse sleep quality than those who were not significantly distressed and physical and mental health. So survivors in good physical and mental health reported better sleep quality than those in poor health. When we say this, it might be very obvious, but again, it is to say, well, now we're, we know this. It's, it's there in, in the data, and we know that those who are more recently diagnosed, so within uh, the first year of their treatment, where so much is going on, they are not sleeping well. And if they are highly stressed, distressed, all of that gets connected and tangled up and can make the experience, uh, the daily experience of living with a cancer diagnosis as a young adult quite difficult. Quality of life. Uh, so quality of life uh, is something that we are really focused on because it, it, it really involves so much of it. So we looked at the quality of life uh, among survivors of adolescent and young adult cancer, and we compared with matched peers, again, to see how is their quality of life? What is the impact of, of their quality of life? Um, if we look here, yeah, there we go. So we had the sample, we, um, we, we compared with Canadian Community Health Survey uh, and found 53.1% of uh, the participants at severe to moderate physical impairment 
Once again, that is quite something. So more than half of the participants uh, had almost equally uh, severe and moderate physical impairment. And then if we look here, comparing the two populations, uh, and we look at physical health on one side, mental health on the other side, you can see once again that the survivors, so the young adults uh, who were diagnosed with cancer, um, their physical health um, was, you know, poor health, 26.7% uh, reported poor health compared to 10% in their uh, non-cancer peers and mental health that is way more striking 50.8% of the participants reported poor mental health compared to 9.4% in their uh, matched peers. That is huge. And once again, something we need to know and do something about. So if we compared for male, female, we can see pretty much the same ratio uh, in general in all aspects, those young adults who were diagnosed with cancer had poorer physical health and poorer mental health than their uh, matched peers. And all of those data were significant, statistically significant. And finally, uh, in, a brief, um, in a brief slide, uh, we looked as well into body image. We looked as well into fertility preservation. Um, and so for fertility preservation, uh, the discussions and uptake remain low. So this means that uh, there is not a lot of discussion still uh, about fertility with the young adult population. Uh, but we did find that knowledge of risk, along with making the choice to prioritize treatment over fertility preservation was related to a higher post-traumatic growth. Uh, so for us, what we're still looking into, but it suggests that when the young adult population can make an informed decision about their fertility preservation and make that decision as early as possible in their treatment, it may really support positive psychosocial outcomes. So I think that's what we need to remember here. If you take the time to inform properly the young adults about their fertility preservation options, you allow them to make, make an informed decision that can have a really positive impact along the way. And when it comes to body image, um, higher body image concerns were related to less time since diagnosis. So the closer you were to your diagnosis, the higher uh, body image concerns you had, lower post-traumatic growth, lower social support, greater distress, higher number of treatment received, higher the body image distress. So body image concerns were higher for those who are currently on treatment. So those are all kind of snapshots of some of the findings um, around body image. Again, a topic that is not often addressed uh, with our young adult community, but should be. And finally, the power of connection. That's going to lead us to YAC. Uh, power of connection. So we were really curious to know, um, is being connected to the young adult cancer community, the YAC community, and other communities, does that make a difference? Uh, and what we found is, yes, it makes a difference. So those who feel connected to the young adult cancer community have lower levels of distress, have better mental health, and have less body image distress. Those who do not feel connected to the young adult cancer community they will have a tendency to use less adaptive, so positive reframing way uh, to cope and more maladaptive coping methods, um, you know, substance abuse, alcohol, avoidance. So those uh, people who feel not connected, um, we saw that. So connection is usually important. And so we also were super interested in uh, what post-traumatic growth and connection um, was. So post-traumatic growth is really, it has a various list of factors, appreciation for life, spiritual change, personal strength, possibilities relating to others. Um, and it's really post-trauma, the growth that someone experiences and uh, all the factors within post-traumatic growth 
were significantly higher in those who reported feeling connected to the young adult cancer community. So once again, if you are a young adult uh, dealing with cancer or have been diagnosed with cancer and you're not really connected and you're not sure, I would certainly encourage you to listen to the next part of the presentation and learn about YAC, but to explore ways for you to maybe connect with people and see the impact it has on you. If you are a health professional, I hope that hearing how important connection to peers is in the health, the overall health and growth of the young adult, young adult community uh, helps you refer young adults to uh, resources for them. And if you just know someone, uh, again, this is important to maybe encourage your friends um, to connect with peers who are also going through cancer. So, uh, Yak Prime, like I said, we have a lot more findings. There are a lot of articles available, uh, but really it's not to depress anyone that we bring forward these data, but it's just more to say cancer is quite disruptive in the lives of young adults. It has a real impact on their development. Uh, young adults experience higher levels of distress compared with their peers, significant levels of fear of cancer recurrence, poor sleep quality, worse physical and mental health than general population, and they experience massive financial disruption. I didn't add all the financial disruption slides because it would have made the presentation quite long, but we are more than happy uh, to answer any questions. You can connect with us. Yakprime.ca has some links as well um, where you can learn more about that, but these are major keystones moments. Conversations around body image and fertility are really important to help this community and social support and connection to others can really buffer some of these negative effects. Uh, so all these risk factors that we're identifying, if you're going through cancer, there are ways to help. If you're working with people going through cancer, there are better ways to help them. So let's dig into that. Yeah. So this brings me to talking to to you a little bit more about Young Adult Cancer Canada. So why? A part of me feels and hope, I guess, that after speaking to you about the YAC Prime study, some of this is obvious. Um, but why YAC? Well, the first thing we always say is that cancer is different for young adults. Uh, it's not worse. Cancer is really difficult no matter when you are diagnosed, but it is definitely different to get it when you are young. And it takes longer to recover from cancer than to be treated for it. And that is a fact that is not known enough, spoken enough. So there is this misconception that cancer starts there and it ends there. And if treatments are over, this is it, this is done with, where cancer is actually a transformational experience uh, that brings a lot of challenges and it takes longer to heal and grow within those challenges. We need to know that. It is not because you ring a bell that everything is dusted and done with. So cancer is different. Um, Danny, Danny Taylor, who is actually a YAC team member now recently, uh, she was diagnosed with colon cancer at 23. And uh, she very eloquently said the isolation was, the, was one of the only side effects I couldn't take a pill for. And it also lingered the longest. The retreat, which she had participated in from Yak, was hands down the most important experience of my life. We said it just before, connections are important. And we're saying cancer is different. Isolation is huge within our young adult cancer community. So connecting makes a difference. And that's what Yak tries to do. So Yak wants to support young adults with, through, and beyond cancer. This means if you're recently diagnosed all the way through, if you are living with your cancer, if your cancer is metastatic, all the way to the end, we want to be there for you. All types of cancers, um, all types of stages, uh, we are here. And our support really starts with connection. So that's at the core of everything we wanna do. So we have web, local, national connections that I'll dig into. Every cancer, every stage, Yak's got your back. And that's a man mantra that we repeat 
to ourselves in the team all the time, but to our community members as well, new and alumni. So the web. So how can you connect with your peers? How can you get some support from YAC web connections? So youngadultcancer.ca, we are working on a new website, so that should come soon, and I think it's going to be quite exciting. Um, but youngadultcancer.ca is the one place that from home, you can type that and browse and read stories from peers, read stories from people who went through this of all kinds, finds tons of different resources from all kinds of friends and partners, Elixir, Wellspring, Wellwood, Inspire Health, all our partners who are doing incredible work. You can find information on our website there. But I would say most of all, you can find stories. The profile section has hundreds of stories from young adults uh, that you can hopefully find um, and uh, find relate to a little bit. And the social media and private uh, and public space. So Yak is also quite active on social media. So we have different accounts on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and uh, we have private spaces. So Yak has a private Facebook group uh, that has over 1300 young adults from everywhere in the country in every possible uh, place in their cancer experience. Uh, and this space really is a place where you can first connect ask a question, just look around, not interact yet, read stories. You use that group as you need, uh, but it is certainly a very a nice gateway into the community to see how we can better support you. Uh, I should mention that um, YAC serves young adults, anyone who was diagnosed uh, 39 years and younger can benefit from YAC's programs. Uh, so if you have been diagnosed between zero and 39 years old, uh, you can reach out to us and uh, we're gonna do our best to offer you some support and services. Face-to-face -to, -face to online. So I don't know if you know, but the last two years we've been kind of through a pandemic. Uh, so this meant that YAC had to uh, do a big uh, shift, a pivot like so many did. Uh, and very quickly, what we used to do in person, face to face, uh, our volunteers, our incredible volunteers were creative and changed that up so that it could be offered online. Local Life is one of those programs. So we have Local Life um, in eight cities in the country uh, from uh, St. John's, Ottawa, Toronto, Winnipeg, Edmonton, Calgary and Victoria and Vancouver are the cities uh, right now. Uh, and they have been extremely creative in getting together when it was possible outside, but also doing really fun, social, casual social events online. That's what local life is about, hanging out, having some fun uh, and connecting with your peers. So that has been going on quite well. Face-to-face, -face, so we do uh, have some face-to-face -face programs. We're working our way through what is this going to mean post-COVID or after this big pandemic we just all went through. Uh, but YAC uh, holds Survivor Conference uh, in person, four-day event with all kinds of keynote speakers, presentations. We have Retreat Yourself, uh, which is also a four-day weekend uh, with 24th, 26th of your peers, talk about your issues, share your story, hang out. And we have the Retreat Yourself Adventure, which brings, uh, which brings survivors uh, and supporters. Um, all our programs are open to young adult cancer um, patients, survivors, and their supporters. So if you're a young adult supporting a young adult with cancer, you are welcome into YAC's programs and services as well. So the adventure brings you on the west coast of Newfoundland. We climb a mountain, we do some zip lining and talk about transitions in life. Those programs eventually are going to come back in some shape or form. We are working on it, uh, but this is part of uh, the regular, I guess, YAC offering. And the pivot. So um, virtual programming has become a real Thing. It's here to stay. Uh, but after uh, the pandemic started, what we did is we transformed everything. So we were about to have an in-person conference. Obviously, this couldn't happen. So we have created a virtual uh, version of our Survivor Conference. And that has happened three times since the beginning of the pandemic. Um, so that's going to come back. Uh, we have um, Yakety Yak. 
uh, every Friday night created by members in our community, led by volunteers of YAC. It's a bunch of young adults. They hang out on Zoom for hours long talking about anything and everything. A lot of it has nothing to do with cancer. It's mostly just social online. So if you are kind of wondering, you can pop in into a yakety yak evening, see how it goes. Uh, and uh, just need to be in the Facebook group of Yak and then you'll get all the information you need. Another beautiful creation during the pandemic was the Yak Chats. Uh, led by YAC volunteers that are trained. Uh, we have multiple chats every week on a variety of topics that are relevant to the young adult cancer community, relationships, fear of cancer recurrence, distress, the future, uh, work, school, um, relationships with friends, family, romantic relationships, all of those conversations take place uh, weekly. You can go on our website, youngadultcancer.ca, go into chats and sign up uh, to as many chats as you want within each month. And they're quite a wonderful way to, in a smaller group, uh, connect with your peers and get to talk about what goes on uh, for you. And finally, We Get It. Uh, we Get It has been our web series. So we have had, we get it since the beginning of the pandemic. It new season just started last week, every Monday night, 7 p.m. live on Facebook, available on YouTube as well, and podcast on Apple Podcasts. You can hear stories from young adult cancer survivors and, support, and supporters. You can have uh, health professionals that are guests that give tools and information, sessions that were previously offered at conference. All of that content is available and ready for you to listen and uh, tune in and learn and be touched and moved and informed and all of those things. So we get it goes on. All of this you can find at youngadultcancer.ca for more information. So uh, I spoke briefly uh, about the chats and uh, I would love to share with you a video uh, from Krista. Krista shared with us uh, some of what the chats mean to her. So I wanna share with you, if you have yourself some doubts about doing it and jumping in, if you're a health professionals and um, you're seeing young adults and you want to help them connect with their peers and you're not quite sure, don't take it from me. Take it from Krista, so I'm going to share uh, the video for you and come back right after. I, I, I use three words to describe my pre-cancer life. Um, and they, the words I use are meaningless, passive, and angry. And I say meaningless because I wasn't necessarily living for me. And a, a lot of what I was doing was just going through the motions, um, 10 steps ahead of myself, always thinking about the next day. Um, and there was never much of, um, attention focused on myself. Mm -hmm. um, I say passive because I don't believe that I was ever living with intention or thought. Um, and then angry, to be honest, like I, I can't remember a time when I wasn't. Um, that was a lot of the times my first emotion. Um, and I, when I got diagnosed, I was eight months postpartum with twins. Um, and so that um, was very difficult <laughs> because I'm just trying to, to be an, a new mom and figure out that life. And then all of a sudden you, bam, you get hit with this. <laughs> I remember going to like my first web chat and with a fresh bald head and I couldn't even like, I could barely say my diagnosis out loud without breaking down. <laughs> And it's still like, it's only been a year. It's still very raw, as you can tell. But um, finding that space within Yak and, and, and being exposed to, for the first time to other individuals who had same experiences like me was just so empowering. And it really like picked me up and set me in a, in a direction to head where I am now. And I'm so grateful. And so I couldn't relate to anyone. I, 
I couldn't, yeah. And, and the, the isolation and self-loathing was so real. Um, and, and that's why when I had found out about these web chats, and I uh, was able to meet other people like me and just make that connection, the validation that I received and the type of support um, that I just couldn't get elsewhere um, was, uh, was so like, it just, like I said, saved me. And to no fault of, you know, their own, like my spouse, my family, like they don't, they don't, they don't get it, you know? And um, the people, um, in the chats did. And I came back week after week after week for many months. Um, and I, and I always left, you know, feeling much better and, um, um, and, and really valuing, you know, my time with the, with those people who are now my friends. here so that was Krista um and she says it like I said you don't have to believe me as long as you uh maybe explore refer uh young adults to chats I think it can be quite meaningful so our program face to face uh this is Yak's map um 5,000 young adults have been through our programs uh, and you can see all the dots on the map. Uh, they represent a postal code. Some of those dots have one person, but some of those dots have hundreds. Uh, so we're hoping to expand more and more and to reach uh, greater diversity in all of the ways uh, for the, all the young adults and all their lived experiences in, in the country. The reality is that there are to this day still 22 young adults diagnosed every day and wine, one finds yak. Uh, and so we want to find the other 21. And we hope that by you listening in today, you can help us do that by referring young adults to us or by yourself, maybe checking us out and see if it's maybe something you want to try. So that's kind of us and a lot of information. I'm more than happy to answer any questions and for you to connect at any point, connect at youngadultcancer.ca uh, is our general email where you can send in your questions uh, and, uh, and youngadultcancer.ca, our website is also a really great place to go and start. Thank you so much. Remember us, hopefully every time you connect with a young adult with cancer, if you yourself are a young adult and you're meeting with someone else, uh, let them know about us and hopefully this was helpful. So very grateful for your time and attention and hopefully it was not too boring. All right. Thanks. Bye.